Welcome back into the show. Ballet 22 looks to push the boundary of, uh, boundaries of what's possible in ballet with their works ranging from classical to contemporary while breaking the gender normative tradition. Joining us now are the co-founders of Ballet 22, Roberto Vega Ortiz and Teresa Nudson. Thank you both so much. Teresa, Roberto, we appreciate you guys taking the time to be here. Yes, yeah, thank, thank you, you for, for the platform, for yes. having us, Olivia. We appreciate it. Of course. Now, for those who don't know, point in ballet, traditionally, only women have been able to do this type of dance. Now, why was it important for Ballet 22 to emphasize this is a dance that men or non-binary -bi individuals can also do, not, not just females? Absolutely. I think, um, you know, dance is for everyone. And it's the same as fashion, like not letting women wear pants. It's like, why? Right? <laughs> like, just let yeah. people try the things they want to try. And if a certain form of dance inspires you, you shouldn't be barred just because of your anatomy. And there's a large community of men and non-binary folks who are enamored with the point shoe in the same way that women are drawn to point, point shoes. And so um, they're not given the opportunity to train and so most men are just putting point shoes on on their own training themselves and there's kind of this underground community and Roberto is part of that and several other individuals and there's not a lot of opportunity to really train seriously and be supported to have works created on you and so this was something that was really important to Roberto personally and to other folks and for me I was like wow this is so inspiring like just to open up the world of ballet and include more people how would that change this for the field and all the possibilities it just you're you spiral into this inspiration and so you know we realized that this was something that we could complain about or we could do something about mm -hmm. so that was really um, the during the pandemic when everything shut down studios were closed companies were closed and we were all just on zoom trying to stay in shape in our bedrooms we we're like hey, let's, let's make this a thing. Let's take this beyond just a social media post and beyond something you do in private and really, you know, give an organization and a home to this. And, you know, the, the pandemic, I think, was such a difficult time, but it also was a time to reflect on what was important. And it also, of course, freed up your schedule to, you know, bust out those spreadsheets and yeah. make a business plan. So we were given this really unique opportunity to collaborate and create a vision um, that we wanted to see in a more um, professional and cohesive organization. And that's how we created Ballet 22. That's awesome. Such an incredible, incredible concept that you guys have brought forth into the world. Now, Roberto, you specifically, you are a dancer. And, and Teresa mentioned that this is personal for you. Why so personal? I mean, it's something that I was always drawn to. And mm -hmm. it wasn't something that I was allowed or it was seen as a good thing, you know, or like something you could achieve as a uh, career mm -hmm. and I you know I, I loved it and I just really kept pushing through mm -hmm. until you know we found each other here in the bay and we were able to make this happen in a different way that has never been done before mm -hmm. um, which is to dance as our authentic selves and not present in a comedy aspect or in drag so that's kind of like which I, I have done in the past so that's mm -hmm. kind of what's like so important that personally quite never connected with that. Mm -hmm. um, yes, dancing on point, but I wanted to dance as on point as you're looking at me right now. Yes, yes. So that's kind of what what we, you know, what we do and like, you know, with queer stories and stories that you can actually relate to. As much as I love dancing with a beautiful princess, um, you know, I would love to dance with a beautiful prince as well. Yeah, yeah, and be able to be yourself. Exactly. Of course, that's so important. Indi in individuality, be able to do what, what makes you happy. Now, how are you able to push through some of the negative, maybe, or the people telling you, no, you can't do it? How were you able to push through that? I, I think it was just, it's part of my personality, and I think um, resilience and just, like, really going for that no matter what. I, I'm very driven, you know, when I, when I want something, when I like something, I'm going to do it no matter what, regardless of what people say. And I think um, adopting that from a very young age really, like, allowed me to be here right now. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just, like, not caring about, really, what people say as cliche or as that sounds, because it's ultimately true, it's your life and you do what makes you happy. And uh, what was so amazing, it was that I'm not the only one who feels that way. Mm -hmm. 
you know, there is so many people out there in the world, not just the U.S., who feel exactly the same way and who have found Ballet 22, you know, a, a safe environment for, for, for them to, to perform or to be themselves in that, in that way. And to be able to, to come together in community. Yeah. Teresa, why, why was it crucial for you to be an ally and to be able to be involved and help make this happen? Oh, wow, that's such a good question. Um, as a dancer, I think um, all of us are put into gender stereotyped boxes that I think the whole community, whether you're straight, gay, uh, questioning, wherever you're at, I think all of us are very tired of these tropes of prince, princess, being saved. And, and we really want to see dance that speaks to the personal experience, that speaks to your just the feelings within you and I think that's something when people see our shows they leave and the feedback we get is wow the power and just everyone was so raw on stage and everyone that danced they you know they really left a, a piece of themselves behind on that stage and it's not a, a show that's being put on a front that's being put on all of that um, you know just the limitations of classical ballet that create not like a fakeness but kind of a put on show all of those formalities are removed when you're allowed to just be free mm -hmm. and I, I think it really doesn't matter who you are when you see that you're you want to capture it you want to encourage it and that kind of liberation really trickles down into the entire art form for everyone yeah. so uh, you know as i in pandemic we had these classes like seeing the community from all around the world and the passion is like this is something that needs to happen for yeah. our art field and and i do believe that when you make things more equitable and more diverse you're able to see things in a new way that you're like oh i thought i knew this and it's like no actually there's a whole like global <laughs> yeah. perspective yeah. there's um you know everyone's unique perspective that really like can turn what you thought you knew so intimately into something new. And this has been very inspiring for me to be a part of Valley 22, creating it and producing and watching everyone really have this moment of like release and relief. Mm -hmm. And I want that for everyone. Yeah. Uh, everyone really deserves that too. Now, now before I let you guys go, what what do you have coming up this weekend? I heard you have some shows that people can check out. Yes. Yeah. When, when and where? Yes, Friday and Saturday, July 29th and 30th at the Cowell Theater, Fort Mason Center in San Francisco. We're going to be doing kind of what we always do. We have this arc. We do classical works. So, <laughs> you know, paying homage to the classical art form that we love. Mm -hmm. And then we do a restaging of an existing work. And then we always have a world premiere. So we have two world premieres, one by Fernando Ramos from Puerto Rico and Natasha Arruli, who is a, a legend here in the Bay Area. So it's going to be a really broad program. There'll be something for everyone, and we hope that you'll join us. Yep. Amazing. Wonderful. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us on the show, and can't wait for this weekend. Good yeah. luck with it. Thank, thank you. you for having us. Of course. Now, to learn more about Ballet 22, 